What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I have with me Swami from Malton in Montreal. Swami, why don't you say hello? Hello. How you guys doing? How's everybody in TO in the big T dot in the six? It's the Swami calling you from uh, the 514. What up? No, okay. <laughs> 514, I guess that's the area code in Montreal. Yep. Nice. Bonjour à tout le monde à Montréal. Awesome. Hello to Montreal fans. I don't hey. speak to you guys directly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're reviewing Glenn Farkless, 15 year old. I'll wait a second for the set to adjust. I apologize for the poor quality of my camera today, guys, but um, because we're doing somewhat of a live Google Hangout review, I had to use my laptop, which obviously the camera sucks compared to my normal camera. Um, but it was we really don't get to mad at Rob. Don't get mad at Rob. He's doing it for me. He's, uh, <laughs> sweetheart. There you go. <laughs> You're too kind. No worries, no worries. You're too kind. Thank you for inviting me to your wonderful channel and to your awesome fans in the nation of the six. <laughs> so uh, let's start this stuff. Yeah. All right. All right. So um Right now on your channel, you're doing a Glenn Farclas week. Am I correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Well, it's not really a week. It's going to spread through the month. I just called it a week because I'm ripping off of uh, Discovery Channel Shark Week, and I just thought it would be fun to call it Glenn Farclas week when it's really Glenn Farclas uh, three weeks. Right. On. Sounds pretty cool, in my opinion. Yeah. So as this is like – away from my nose I'm starting to pick up the smells already um, we oh, kind of yeah. had a little bit of a chat about this before it does have mm -hmm. a pretty strong uh, Oloroso sherry smell to it would you agree mm -hmm. yes it's got a great nose I find the uh, so far with the Glen Bartlesses they haven't disappointed me on the noses they've all been excellent on the nose um, as I said before the 10 not disappointing just a little I'd say if you've been drinking scotch for more than two three years I would just skip right to the 105 or the 12 or above, and the 10 would be a great scotch for someone just starting off. I still think it's better than, let's say, a Glen Fittick 12 or a Glen Livick 12 or the Glen Morangi basic uh, original kind of stuff like that. If yeah. you're looking at those, I would go for the uh, Glen Parkless 10 because at least it's got some sort of sherry note to it. Kind of like, uh, I'm sure, I think you reviewed it, the Amber Lauer 10? Uh, I didn't review the 10, no, but I but I know what you mean. I've tried it before. Yeah, I, I yeah. do got a little more depth so uh it's got more character than just your uh, basic pears and uh apples kind of smell to it so you got your oloroso sherry in there so it's good yeah. just you're not just picking up the bourbon cask you're picking up some of the oloroso whereas with like your glen livid like you said you don't really pick up that sherry influence yeah you're just picking up green apples and some citrus and stuff like that so um i would say the glen Farkless uh 10 would be worth it for someone just beginning uh, as I said in my review, the 105, though, that's the sweet spot. 105, yeah, that's the cast strength. Yeah. Right. Well, tonight, at least this one's a 46, so expecting yeah. a little bit better on the mouthfeel. So we we're like, this is a uh, natural color, but mm -hmm. we weren't 100% sure if it was chill filtered. But based on what we know about 46% uh, scotches, anything that's 45.7 or higher, there's a good chance that it may be unchill filtered. Although mm -hmm. Ralphie would argue that because he thinks that anything that doesn't say unchill filtered on the bottle doesn't actually have, or is actually chill filtered, right? So I don't know, but this one, uh, this company, maybe I would think a little differently because as you know, this distillery is a family owned distillery and it's all done in house. They're, they don't have a big marketing uh, b budget as uh, let's say uh, people like Ardbeg would have or McAllen's. So, to me, they're probably going with quality, so I'm just guessing that they would probably unchill filter, as you said, at 46%. Yeah. But maybe they don't want to brag about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's the kind of the route that Highland Park is taking, where the product stand, stands for itself. They don't actually want to advertise unchill filtered or natural color because they spend so much money on their barrels and so much money on their, you know, their whiskey that the product speaks for itself and if people enjoy it, and people will enjoy it when they try it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Your, jer your jersey's making your eyes come out, Rob, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, dark brown eyes and yeah. <laughs> match my beard. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the Leafs lost tonight. I'm sure some of you are aware. Um, they they It was a valiant effort. They went mm -hmm. to overtime. Kind of a weak goal, but Anderson had such a good game that you can't really hold it against him. I'm, I'm honestly thinking, like, you know I'm a sense fan. I, I make no buts about it, but... I honestly just want a Canadian team to freaking win it this year. I, I don't want to see an American team lift up that cup. That's all I care about right now. I, I do want my Sens to win it, but if my Sens don't make it through, any of the five get that cup. That's all I care about. You know? Yeah, who would you say has the best chance? Out of the, I, would, I would say maybe Edmonton or Calgary if, if, if it's not somebody out of the East that we would prefer, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say it. Because I really hate them so much, but I honestly think if Montreal can get past the Rangers, Montreal and Edmonton would be my two picks. I think Calgary's still a little too young. Um, even though Edmonton's young, they're young, but they're like so skilled, it's crazy. You know? Yeah, Connor McDavid's a monster. So. As I said, with I talked to you about it before, with you guys, Toronto, I think you guys are like, like the Sens. I think you guys are about a year off from becoming – powerhouse or a year or two i think the Sens have to wait for uh, shabbat to come in and yep. uh team up with carlson on the on the on the blue line and colin white to kind of grow up a bit and logan brown to come in because um right now our team we're good but i i always still think of us as a team that's maybe a second round kind of team we don't have that uh other than carlson we don't really have that star power to get uh, past that point yeah i could see that carlson's a machine but yeah. yeah, you definitely need the offensive uh, punch as well. I mean, he's yeah. very offensive, but he's a defenseman. So, yeah, all we really got on offense is Stone, Turris, and uh, Hoffman because, as we all know, Bobby Ryan is a just complete failure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I wish right, him the so, best of luck in Vegas. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, not, that's probably they're not going to protect him. I wouldn't think. No. Our fans are probably like, "What are these guys talking about at this point?" <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? They're loving it. It's Canadians. They love it. They know we're talking yeah. hockey. Our hockey American whiskey. viewers are thinking, like, what is going on? We came to watch a whiskey review. <laughs> oh, March Madness is over. They'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Baseball started, so. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyway, on the nose here. Yeah. So you get that Oloroso sherry for sure. On the back mm -hmm. end, I'm getting some bourbon. Mm-hmm. What are you I'm definitely, I'm definitely getting a little oak, some nice yeah. wood. A little tiny bit of cinnamon. Okay. Deep yeah, dark ranges. There's, I mean, I have to mention it. There is a touch of like an ammonia smell at the back end. Like it's right at the back. You, you kind of wave through the sherry and the, the really mm -hmm. nice notes that this has. And then there's kind of this like bleachy type ammonia we, smell. We, talk, we talked about this a bit. Um, it reminds me of the Dalmore 15, who also had a really great nose, but had a really strange, weird after note at the end that I didn't really like. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I admit this one, this one kind of reminds me. So maybe it's something to do with the 15 years of age, but I've had some really good say, It's no coincidence that they're both 15. Yeah. Uh, but I've had some really great 15. So uh, I don't know if that is it, but uh, it reminds me, it kind of has the same, deep, dark, sherry notes that the Dalmore 15 had, but with something that is a little off-putting in the background. Yes, I would totally agree. When I when I opened my bottle, I was kind of concerned. I was like, maybe this one's a one-off. Uh, uh -huh. Then I asked, I asked around to see if anybody else kind of picked up the same thing, and they were all pretty much in agreement. Um, uh -huh. So we'll see. I mean, there are a lot of really nice qualities to the nose. It's just that one lingering back-ended smell doesn't burn for 46 at all though not hot on the nose at all no i agree with that yeah for yeah. sure you can just dive in yeah let's give it a taste got it kind of the same thing you have all these awesome pleasant notes right mm -hmm. there's like that that oloroso sherry you pick it up for sure mm -hmm. Some like red fruits, some kind of even like 
tropical type fruits. I'm, let me taste it again. I'm not really getting the tropical. I'm getting raisin for sure. Yeah, on the I mean on the finish, I, you do get some raisin. It's a long finish. Like it, it lasts quite a bit. Yeah, definitely sticks around. Uh, tropical fruit wise, I can see where you're going with that. I can't really pinpoint what it is though, so I, I don't want to say for sure. But I do get a lot like of fruit, a, like a coconut, even. Mm, that that would be. Maybe not tropical fruit, but tropical like when you think tropical flavors. I mean. Yeah, that I always. But to me, it's that bitter note that sometimes you get off of a sherry cask. Yep. I always uh, mistake it either for like you said, coconut or cocoa. One of the two, it kind of comes off. It's just like that kind of bitter, chalky kind of note at the end. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Which is, in my opinion, a pleasant taste. Oh. Yeah. It's it's weird because sometimes I'll take a sip of this one and I noticed that with the first two glasses I had of this, um, I'll take a sip and it's just all pleasant. And then the next sip, I pick up that slight ammonia aftertaste. So mm -hmm. I, I, I haven't, I, I'm getting it on the nose, but I haven't tasted it yet. So we'll see on this next sip here. Mm -hmm. It's really smooth though for 46. I'm really uh, noticing that it's very delicate. Yeah, it is smooth. It mm. is smooth. I mean, some people really like complex scotch, complex whiskeys in general. Mm. And this definitely has all of that, right? Like, it's mm. got a lot going on in the glass, right? So, I definitely. mean, there are definitely people that would really, really enjoy this, I think. I, I, I would agree. I, 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 I never tell people to 100% go with what I say. What my palate is might not be what your palate is. What I enjoy, you might uh, not enjoy. Yeah. All I can do is offer you my opinion, and you go along with what you want. I'll never tell someone not to buy something. I'll tell them if I recommend it personally for myself, but I'll never say don't buy it because yeah. you yeah, might I, like it. I agree. I agree. I, I try to do the same thing uh, just based on price, based on taste, based on what, like, you know, a combination well, of things I'll say whether or not I would buy it again and kind of go from there what, what are your um, what are your feelings here as far as price and do what does this go for in Montreal oh one second let me just look that up I completely forgot to get the price line on that but I think it is at about like not to put you on the spot or anything <laughs> sorry about that no that's not your fault. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up it's okay we got computers it's uh, 2017 yeah, um, this is actually not available at the moment at the LCBO. As oh, it's available. As a few, I think the only ones that are available are the uh, the specialty Lorne. I forget what they're called exactly, but there's the twelve, the ten, the eight. There's the a nineteen. Oh. Or, what's that? The one hundred five is not available at the, the LCBO. The one hundred five is not available at the moment. It was not that long ago, uh, and I, I believe it was around eighty-five bucks. Yeah, it's eighty-eight dollars in Quebec right now, the five, and it's actually a really good price for a fifteen-year-old today. Maybe not a fifteen-year-old five years ago, but it's a good deal. It's ninety-seven dollars and fifty cents, so under under a hundred bucks. Okay, all right. So an affordable buy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, that that kind of maintains. Like that's the theme of Glen Farquhar. They're all pretty much reasonably priced. Oh. You can buy a twenty-five year old for mid twos. Um, um, in Quebec, under two hundred dollars. Wow! See, there you go. In, in in Toronto or in Ontario, it's it's probably the best price twenty-five year old. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a review on it earlier in my chat. It was probably my my second review on my channel, like over a year ago. So, I I did, yeah I did it back. Um, was back in around December. I did the 25. I'm going to redo it with the 21 just for a comparison, but I already did the 25 as well. Really good dram. The only other 20 year old they can get in Quebec for under, and it sadly it went up, but there was uh, two 20 year olds that you can get for under uh, $200. There was the Glen Farkless 21, the Glen Farkless uh, 25, and the Glen Drenac uh, Parliament 21. That was also wow. under 200. But that went up now to 202 just because the sack. Needs to make it a little extra, so. Hey, you know what? For even for two hundred and two dollars, when we're talking Canadian prices, yeah, 
Vendronic, uh 21 year olds that's an incredible draft for that price in my opinion I'm gonna be uh, probably doing the entire lineup uh, coming up this summer at some point that'll be um, exciting. that's honestly one of my favorite uh, lines for sure I've done yeah. a whole bunch myself I've done the, the fifth the 12 the 15 the 18 and the 21 I have a 25 year old I would like to open it at some point but some of these bottles that are like really really expensive and really really hard to get you kind yeah. of almost feel bad opening them unless it's a special occasion yeah i got sad because i um you know peter white he comments on both our channels he kept on like nudging me to go get the 15 from glendronic and there was a ton in quebec like everyone was like saying how jealous it was be like a ton 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 so it was like putting it off i was buying other stuff buying other stuff i was like oh, i'll get it later i'll get it later i've got like 50 bottles right now and they're all open i want to finish them and then i'll go get it and literally the day i go to get it all gone i was so ticked and it showed i went online and i saw like three bottles i was like okay and i rushed to the sack and when i got there they're gone so. <laughs> yeah i actually had called uh peter white's a good guy uh, yeah. by the way really really nice guy actually he's one of my bourbon um references i always kind of run a, a bourbon by him because he knows so much about bourbon but um when the when i noticed that the saq had glendronic 15 year old i called to see if there was a way to ship them over to ontario and yeah. apparently they're in the works of um amalgamating the lcbo and the saq so that they can ship over um from province to province but unfortunately it wasn't in the time that uh, I could buy the Glen, the uh, Glendronic 15 year old, but I was lucky enough to get a few, uh, a couple from a gift. And then I made a trade with Peter White actually um, to get the other one when I traded that three quarter bottle of uh, George T. Stagg for, uh, for the uh, Glendronic uh, 15. You guys got a really nice uh, Ontario base with Trenny and you guys, everybody. I'm sad, my area, just me. I'm like stuck on an island. Literally, I'm stuck on an island. Montreal is an island. <laughs> I'm like just out of reach because of our our dumb post office stuff where we can't send things uh, across the province lines. I still don't understand why it's like that. I uh, hear they're, they're actually going, there's some people I've been hearing going to court about that or something that they should be allowed. They're kind of uh, post Canada, actually. They're taking the government to task saying that they should be allowed to transfer alcohol across state lines, or so, uh, across province lines. But I think well, it's there, was, there was this huge case uh, because someone from Ontario was driving over to the SAQ, buying all kinds mm -hmm. of beer and alcohol, and then driving it back. He got pulled over. They tried to press charges on the guy. He won the case because federally they're not allowed to charge us for buying alcohol within our own country because there's no duty and there's no anything like that because you're not doing it from country to country. So it, it, it was pretty interesting. Uh, the guy won his case, which – basically told the rest of Canada that it's legal to buy from other provinces. Um, the gray area is the shipping. Most shipping companies won't handle alcohol at all. And when it comes to Canadian provinces, they actually just, if, if they know it's alcohol, they, they won't even look at it. They won't even look at the package. They'll send you away. So. Yeah, no, I, I find it. It's just sad because me and you, we've talked about in the past. I completely agree with the pricing. It doesn't bother me. The only thing that bothers me is the extra bureaucracy around it. Like, um, we're in Canada. We should be able to ship all across Canada. If I want to buy from an Albertan store, I should be allowed to. These, uh, the LCBO, the SAC, I don't know what the other ones are called, but they make record profits every single year. And they just need to relax and let, you know, us have a little bit. Okay, we can't get from the States. Cool. But let us get from each other, man. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because this bottle right here, it's a yeah. four-row, single-barrel uh 58.3%. I haven't shown this one off yet just because I'm so embarrassed of how much I ended up having to pay for it. I got it at a great deal in Buffalo. I went to the wow. UFC last weekend, uh, brought it back. I, I thought I was doing the right thing by declaring it, thinking, okay, it's going to be about 20, 30 bucks duty. They hit me with a hundred percent tax on this bottle. So the bottle cost, <laughs> the bottle cost 65 dollars american they charged me 69 dollars canadian to bring it over i will i i was absolutely floored when i heard the How price about neck? 
So oh. basically, I'm gonna savor every last drop of this bottle. I'll show you guys the um, the recipe. I don't know if you can make that out. Can you see what that says? Uh, December 2015 single barrel selection OBSQ 35% uh, camp mash bill. Yeah, mash bill rye rye mash bill. So it's an eight year eight months. Um, they had these for a while in Ontario, but all you can find now is the 50% versions. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is it's a nice bottle. It was a nice find. I got it like I said for $65 American. And then I ended up getting hosed as soon as I crossed the border, trying to do the right thing. By <laughs> I got I, I I brought a little bottle. Of, it wasn't even whiskey. Uh, last year, uh, me and my friend uh, went down to Burlington, Vermont, with the motorcycles, drove down, and we were there just there for the day because there was like a bike fest up in Burlington, which is hilarious. Because when I was crossing the border, like they were asking me if I have affiliations with Hell's Angels and stuff like that, and I was like, dude, I work in administration. <laughs> Like, the only gang I know is uh, documenting uh, typing pool kind of gang. But anyways, I was just laughing because he was like asking me all these questions like, uh, are you affiliated? I was like, no. Anyways, so coming back, I like they had this like gin that uh, I kind of like, but it was, I can't remember which one it was, but anyways, it was like a gin I really liked. And it was like 24 bucks over there and back here for some reason, it's like $60. It's just like, fuck it. Sorry, I don't mean to swear on the channel, but I was like, I'm just gonna bring it. So I back to the bike and I go to the to the border crossing and I just I want to cross. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, what choice do they give us? They they really don't give us a choice. Yeah. Buy a bottle over there and pay 100 percent tax on the bottle. That's all going to the Ontario government. That's not yeah. going to, you know, it's not going to the, the distillery that makes the whiskey. It's not, you know. It caught this bot the the other version of this bottle costs I think forty five dollars Canadian at the LCBO, oh, which yeah. is actually a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. And this cost me three times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, your thoughts? Uh, we talked about it. Uh, would you recommend this for people to buy? So, uh, like I said, if if you're into really complex whiskeys and you don't mind that ammonia smell, because I know that there's people out there that really like the Glen Farquhar's 15 year old and they must not mind that, that taste, that smell because whatever, you know, then I'm, who am I to say, don't buy it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there are better whiskeys for the price. And for me personally, um, not to insult it and I don't mean to insult it. It's a good whiskey. It has a lot of great qualities to it, but I would probably give this a C to be honest yeah. with you. No worries. Uh, as you know, I don't really rate. I just let people know what I think. To me, um, to be honest, the 17 is not that much more, and the 105 is less, and the 105 is just extraordinary. I'm not insulting Glenn Farkless in any shape, way, or form. I love all their products down the line so far. This and the 10 seem to be the ones that uh, not too big on. So yeah. I wouldn't see myself buying a ball. Then again, though, if you're a fan of Delmore 15, pick it up. Because to me, that's what it reminds me of a lot is the 15 from Delmore. So if you like that, that's a comparison I can give you. And we know that there's a lot of people that really like the Delmore 15. So like, like you said, if you're a fan of the Delmore 15, this is probably the right scotch for you. Mm -hmm. It just it doesn't maybe meet our you know, metrics when we're looking at a specific scotch, you know? And it's got a good product. It's made well. Uh, it's bottled at 46%, which is the sweet spot. So it's got a lot of positives. It's got one slight negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what I love about Glenn Farkless is the fact that they're family owned, that mm -hmm. they try to keep everything to the best of their ability, the high quality whiskey, and they put everything into their stuff. So you got to respect that, if nothing yeah. else. Mm hmm. Got to support the independents, man. That's uh, I've always said that on my channel. That's why I always kind of big up uh, Kilhoman. And even though Spring Bank is not really uh, independent anymore, still love their practices. I love the way that they do it with minimal marketing. Same thing goes for uh, Brook Laddie. Brook Laddie, sorry. Love them. Yeah. And the Port Charlotte uh, collection. Great stuff. You know. Uh, the one that I always rave about the most is the, uh, the I think you'll be doing some reviews on it shortly, too, is the Glen Goyne. Uh, that would be 
that'll be around August. But yeah, I I don't want to say for sure. I've uh, got some news in the pipeline that I should be able to get the entire collection in. And uh, I've been loving doing these collection reviews where I did like the entire Teelings lineup and now with the Glen Park list. I'm looking uh, to do uh, uh, also, sorry, the Ball Blairs. Uh, I might be getting those in, the Glen Goyen. And there's a chance that I'll be doing also the Compass Box groups, but only what we have available here in Canada. It's not going to be stuff that they get in the States. So it's pretty much, I think it's going to be Hedonism, uh, Spice Tree, and Peat Monster. And and those are all awesome brands. The other one that I would mention is uh, Brook Laddie. I love Brook Laddie. I've oh. had a, an opportunity to have a few of them recently, and they're incredible. The Blackheart 4.1, you guys know how I feel about that. I gave that one an A+. Plus. Uh, hopefully oh, you'll get a chance to, I, I believe I might be getting a chance to try the Black Art 5.1 very soon, hopefully before it hits Ontario shelves. Uh, we'll find out, depending on timing, what what ends up happening with that, but I love Brook Laddie right now. Is it cool if I can say something really quick to uh, your Montreal viewers? Go for it, man. That's right. why we have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as I stated, I am going to be doing a bottle giveaway. It is a lot 40 bottle once my channel hits 200. So any of you from Montreal, this is only for Montreal residents. Sorry guys, I don't want to send uh, alcohol through the mail and I'd like to meet the person I'm giving to just to make sure that you're right of age. So I don't want to get in any trouble with the law. So you have to be from Montreal. Uh, I'm doing a lot 40 giveaway when we hit 200 uh, subscribers, okay? And I'll do another bottle giveaway when I hit uh, 600, but when I hit 600, it'll be something much bigger, but for 200, I'm doing lot 40. <laughs> it's still free, so if you want it, subscribe to my channel, send me a private message on either, uh, I'm sorry, on YouTube or on Twitter. Uh, send me a private message with your email, okay? And that's all you have to do. And sorry to interrupt. Oh, uh, for those of you who are interested in what that looks like, it's this bottle right here, La Forty. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful Canadian rye. Excellent, excellent stuff. This is. Uh, I'm going to be doing an interview with Spencer Gooderham. I believe it'll be on uh, April 29th. April 29th is a Saturday. Uh, we're going to be talking about all of. He's the ambassador for um, Corby's. And he will be talking about Law 40. We'll be talking about Gooder Hammond Warts. We'll be talking about uh, JP Wise, who's double still rye. So that bottle that you're talking about that you're giving away, that's very, very generous of you because that's a wicked oh. bottle. Uh, I'm a working class love. I'll do what I can do for my fans. Well, I don't call you guys fans. My subscribers who seem to like watching me embarrass myself week to week doing Scotch reviews. Thank <laughs> you for subscribing. Keep on coming. I love hearing from you. Keep on writing in. Rob has an excellent channel, so to anybody, uh, I'd like to thank him a lot for bringing me on here, and you've given me tons of love and tons of shout-outs, and I really appreciate it, my friend, and this has been a really fun time. And uh, Go Sends Go on Saturday, and I think the Leafs are playing Saturday, too? The Leafs are playing Saturday, so I must uh, also return your Go Sends Go with a Go <laughs> Leafs Go. And... Um, Honestly, Swami, it was my pleasure, buddy, and hopefully we can do this again in the future, maybe on your channel, and uh, it's, like I said, my pleasure, buddy. So we'll, we'll do a thing like, um, the, you ever watch The Amazing Atheist? I haven't, he, no. He had this show, uh, anyways, and they have like five or six cameras. Soon we'll do one where it'll be like me, you, uh, Scotch Test Dummies, Trenny and C, bringing everybody, just like have like... Uh, It'll look like, uh, what was that show with the, the, the father and mother that got married and they had six kids, but separate. The Brady Bunch. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So you're going to be on with the Scotch Test Dummies shortly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Scotch Test Dummies shortly. Um, they do this thing at the end of their live streams where they'll ask who they have on, what their favorite movie is. So uh, right. I'm going to kind of steal their uh, thunder and – and come at you because I know you play a lot of music on your channel. So what what was your favorite band growing up? That's really hard. Uh, I, I loved a lot of bands, but growing up, I was a, I was very much a hardcore punk growing up. Uh, still kind of in my heart, but I'm an old man now. So by the way, it's my birthday today, 39. Happy birthday, man! Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot it's my birthday. It's too late right now. Um, yeah. I'm um, 39 years old today, and my favorite band growing up, uh, 
Oh, my God. Put me on the spot here. I would have to say probably the Cramps. They're a psychobilly band from back in the day with Luxie uh, Entertainer. He died uh, recently. I think it was like 2013. But uh, they were my favorite band uh, growing up. Still, I love the hip hop. I love the metal. I love the punk. I love the country. I like, I, I'm a music lover. I love all music. But, uh, I hear that, man. Punk, I hear that. punk is my awesome. number one love. <laughs> all right. Well, this was Whiskey in the Six. Like I said, this one's a C. Uh, still, if you're interested, go to a bar, check it out. You, it might be your thing, okay? Just because it's not mine doesn't mean it's not good. Um, that's it. You guys can check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the same old spiel. Um, just type in Whiskey in the Six and. That's it. And also, please check out Swami's channel if you haven't already. Malted in Montreal. He's a super cool guy doing really, really cool stuff. And his new um, series of whiskeys, that's, that's a really cool thing. I like, I like the lineup idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I enjoy bringing them out to everybody. Have a good night, Rob. Have a good night, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, people in the States somewhere. Uh, the two guys, slow leg up in uh, Danishville, and uh, everybody else. Yeah, they're good guys. <laughs> All right, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, Swami. Cheers. Good night.